Hello, welcome to another video of me underwriting the creative deals that I have in my portfolio. And in this video, I'll be underwriting the my old primary residence. So for those of you guys who are not who, who are who just kind of subscribed to my YouTube channel, I actually live in an apartment right now. But prior to me living in an apartment, I actually had my own house that I bought subject to, meaning I took over someone else's existing mortgage payment. And I actually bought that house. And I was, li I lived in, I actually lived in it for about four to five months before I moved back into an apartment. And the reason why I moved back into my apartment was, you know, it was too big of a house for me. And I didn't really see a reason why I needed to be live in such a big house. So I moved back into, an, so I moved back into an apartment now, but I actually had bought multiple sub twos in the past, but they were all investments, right? Uh, but, but on this one, I actually bought this house for me to live in it. So the underwriting was a little bit different. And I want to highlight that in the video. So before we get started, I'm going to share my iPad screen with you. Uh, as you can see, the address of the house is 4352 East Cherokee Street. So this is a house, you can, you can look it up on PropStream. You can see that I still own this property to this day, all right? So this is a four bedroom, two bath house. And I, if you look at the, if you look at the, if you look at the purchase price that I bought this house for, 590973 And the reason why I bought, the, the reason why the purchase price is such a specific number is because I bought the house by taking over an existing mortgage and I gave the homeowner $35,000. So it was mortgage balance plus $35,000. And as you can see, I bought the house on June of last year, end of June last year. And I'm back in my apartment and I'm happy. I'm, I couldn't be happier, to be honest with you. All right, so... Uh, now the house is worth six fourteen. I guess um, this is this is a Zillow. The Z estimate is at six fourteen as of to this morning. So I don't really care. I don't plan on selling my house in the next 10, 20, 30 years unless I get a really really good offer that I just can't say say no to. All right, and here is a settlement statement to show you that I actually closed on this house, right? So as you can see, the buyer of this property was KC Property Holdings, which I'm I'm the buyer. And I block out the seller's information and my private money lenders information, even though you guys can look it up on public record, but I just didn't want to disclose it on, on my on my on a public YouTube channel. Jaime was my PML. He was my private money lender. And I you guys you guys can ask him for money if you guys want, but he would not lend to you because this this was a special occasion that he would he would lend to me. He he would he only lent it to me because I mean, this was going to be my primary residence. And I apologize in advance. I uh, you, you guys you guys can see like the settlement statements are not lined up. The reason why I I I, I had to break it up. Otherwise, I couldn't really see. Like if I zoomed in, it would you come. Um, it, it was so blurry, so I had to chunk it up. So, but I promise you, this is the exact settlement statement. Uh, purchase uh, per sales property of the house was five hundred ninety thousand, and then I did I, and I put my own five thousand dollars of earnest money, and obviously taxes prorated. You know, taxes are pro. Uh, we you know we prorate all the taxes, and this was my this was my, this is how much I borrowed from Jaime. Jaime gave me fifty five grand at eight percent, I think, or. It, Jaime actually took out a HELOC to give me fifty five thousand, and my payment to he, Jaime is, is adjustable every single month. But whatever whatever Jaime's payment is to the HELOC is how much I pay him. So Jaime doesn't make any money just becoming a lender. He just he just did this a huge favor for me because he trusted me. All right. So and and on this deal, this deal was listed on the market, so we ended up paying a real estate agent twelve thousand three hundred fourteen thousand three hundred twelve thousand three hundred fourteen dollars. And I love paying real estate agents commission. They des they they fully deserve the full commission that they that they should get paid. All right, just FYI, I try my best to pay uh pay the agent at all times. Uh, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they give me so much headache, and I'm like, I don't want to pay you. But nonetheless, all right. So owner's policy sixteen hundred bucks. All these, and then there's all these escrow all these escrow charges, like 200 bucks for assignment fee and then e-recording and doc preparation. Those things are standard. You have to pay whether you go through, regardless of what title company you go through. But, um, and then I, on this deal, I did not, I actually paid three different assignment fee on this because I didn't, um, I didn't find this deal, right? So this is the beauty is I didn't spend any of my time finding this deal. This deal actually came to my table. So, and there were three different people involved. So I put, so I paid each of them 2,500 bucks. And honestly, they paid, they were okay with 2,500 bucks, even though, um, because this was going to be my primary residence. And I told them, Hey, I'm going to lose money on this. This is not an investment. So I negotiated the assignment fee across the board. And then let's see. And then, and then obviously the seller got, um, $35,000 at cash at close of escrow. So, so just to break it down, I pay the, I pay the seller 35,000. I paid the agent, I'm just going to say 12,000. And then I pay this, uh, uh, assignment fee of seventy five hundred bucks total, and then I pay the closing costs. And closing cost, I I think I paid. I'm I'm just gonna guess about thirty five hundred bucks. 
So if I were to add this all up, right, let me actually do the math on, on the computer because that's what we are. We humans are smart. 35,000 plus 12,000 plus 7,500 bucks plus 3,500 bucks was 58,000. So I'm just going to use a simple math of $58,000 is how much it costs for me to get into this deal, right? 58,000. And then, but then I did a $5,000 earnest money as, as you guys, as you guys saw. And the payment on my house, this is an old, this is a little bit of an older mortgage statement because the mortgage actually got trans transferred. So I don't have the most recent mortgage statement yet, but nonetheless, my payment on my payment every single month is $3,055. All right. And this is how the payment is broken down. 1500 of it goes straight to interest. I don't just write down the drain. But nine hundred and seventy-five dollars of the three thousand dollars I make payment I make goes towards paying down my principal payment, and then escrow is which is taxes and insurance. Taxes and insurance I pay five hundred thirty-five dollars. So every month I'm paying three thousand and fifty-five dollars, and then so that's that's my PITI, and then I also have a PML payment of four hundred thirty-six dollars. And mind you, the four hundred thirty-six dollars it changes every single month, right? So like I said, my payment to Jaime, my private money lender, changes. Because his payment changes, so if he sometimes he pays four hundred thirty six dollars a month, sometimes he changes he uh he pays a little bit more, sometimes he pays a little bit less. But I'm just gonna on average, my my last month payment to him was four hundred thirty six bucks, and it it just it was give and take, you know, a couple hundred cup, it was give and take a couple bucks. So it's not it's not a deal breaker, and then I and then obviously this was not an investment, but now that I turn this house into an investment for my primary, I have this house rented on Airbnb at the moment. So let's just so every month on. Every month on my on, on, on the cost of the house, it costs me about just around 3500 $3, bucks. And there's an HOA of like 12 bucks. So I, I, I don't even know if I want to count that in my payment. And every single month, I'm just going to say the payment to upkeep the house is 3500 bucks a month, just for the easy number, okay? It's, I don't have to go too much into detail. And right now, at the moment, this house is rented out on Airbnb, or we found a tenant through Airbnb, and we ended up signing another lease outside of that after they're after expired for five thousand dollars a month, right? So we have a lease right now, and let's see how um it says start on February second. So it started this month, and then it will terminate, uh, March thirty first, two thousand twenty four. So about for two months, for two months, for two months, they uh they're going to pay five thousand dollars a month. Okay, but then prior to this guest, prior to this guest arriving, we also have an Airbnb booking. And this is crazy, and, and I I I can't I couldn't believe it in my own eyes, but I actually had this house rented out on Airbnb for thirteen thousand dollars a month, roughly, right? So Heather had a client. It was a, it was a construction company, and construction company was looking to uh looking for a two month two to three months stay for the for their crews to stay at. So the construction company hired Heather to go find me so that they so I could rent out the house to her clients. Right. And then the amount that they paid was 20, they paid $26,000 for 58, 58 nights. Right. So, but then obviously Airbnb took a cut and then I got paid out $22,000 for, let's just say, uh, for the, for two months. So roughly I made about $11,000 a month, but I'll say this was, this was a little bit one off. Like this doesn't happen all the time, right? This rarely happens. But I'm just gonna say conservatively, I I got the I can I can consistently get the house rented out for five thousand dollars a month, no problem. So let's do the math. Let's go back. I I borrowed fifty five thousand dollars from Jaime. That's the amount that I borrowed at eight percent, and I have a, a eighteen month balloon with him, meaning I have to I have to pay Jaime back on his $55,000 in 18 months, which I should have no problem finding. I, I'll pay him out of my personal cash uh, in about, I think I have about 13 more months left with him. I'll just stack up some cash and I'll just pay him off 55,000 because I don't like having loans on my primary residence. That's just, a, that's just not a good, that's not a, that's just me. A lot of people might disagree with me, but I just prefer not to have payment on my primary residence. So my on my primary residence going forward, I'm going to have no loans. Oh, it's, it's, it's going to be paid full in cash, but all my investments will have, you know, mortgages attached to it, right? $55,000 is how much I put in. And I have this house rented out for $5,000 a month. And, and it includes Wi-Fi, includes Wi-Fi, and they have to pay for their own utilities, pay for their own utilities. But my Wi-Fi is probably like 40 bucks a month because I have good, re I have good relationship with T-Mobile. And my, my, and my payment on this house every single month is roughly 3,500 bucks. And if I'm if I'm rent if I got the house rented for five thousand dollars a month, I'm just gonna put ten percent on vacancies and repair, 
And because my partner is a manager, I don't pay any management fee, right? So, I, so this is my PITI plus HOA plus private money lending payment. All right, so that's roughly 3,500 bucks just for easy number. And I'm also gonna put 500 bucks for vacancy and repairs. And mind you, this house was bought just over a year ago. So for me, there's not, there's not much of a repair. And, and, and mind you, this house came completely furnished, right? So just on the front, just on the furniture alone, if I were to sell all my furnitures right now, yeah, I'll probably cash out another 15 grand. Cause these are high quality furnitures when I, you know, when this, when the homeowner bought it. So that was, that was one of my, one of the things I negotiated was if I, I need to have the house come furnished and she was like, okay, well, so that was, that was including the purchase price. But if I want, if I wanted to sell everything out and I wanted to sell my furnitures first, I'll cash out another $15,000. But you know, because this was my primary investment, I didn't really put this into the calculation. Every single month, my payment that goes out is $4,000. And then I get, and then I bring in about $5,000 a month on rental income, which means I'm going to roughly make $1,000 per month. All right. Like I said, this is not a, this is not a exact number, but roughly fluctuates, right? Because sometimes I put, sometimes I might make I have no vacant. I have no vacancy. I haven't. I haven't had a vacancy for the for the last two months, and also I don't have any repairs. So that five thousand, that that five hundred bucks that I that I that I put in, I could take that as you know owners owners distri distribution. But sometimes I may spend six hundred bucks on vacancies and repairs, and now I'm my my cash flow goes down to nine hundred. But on average, we're gonna just say it's thousand bucks a month. Okay. So if I'm making thousand bucks a month, and I wanted to uh, calculate my cash or cash return, I'm going to that times thousand times by 12, which is which will give me $12,000. And earlier I said, I borrowed $50,000, $55,000 from Jaime, right? Right here. I borrowed $55,000 from Jaime. So I'm going to divide $12,000 by $55,000 to, 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 so that I can calculate my cash on cash return. 12,000 divide that by 12,000 divide that by 55,000. And I'm going to get 21.8% cash on cash return, which is pretty good. 20, 21.81% cash on cash return. This is if I spend my own money into, into this deal, right? Like, but, it, but in this case, I didn't spend any of my own money. So my cash on cash return is technically infinite. Okay. Now the question is, where did this midterm rental client even come from? Number one, I just full disclosure, I don't find any of the tenants, but well, where we find most of our tenants for midterm rental is we find them on Airbnb. Believe it or not, we find like 80% of our clients from Airbnb. We also find them on Facebook Marketplace and we also find them on Furnish Finder. And then we also get it from word of mouth. And let me show you, let me, and let me show you the picture. Of, let me show you the picture of the house too, so that you guys can see what it actually looks like. This is this is what this is what the current picture of the house looks like. This is a standard four bedroom, two bath. The landscaping was already done, a lot of plants. And even just FYI, the plants itself cost me probably eight thousand dollars all cumulatively. All right. Everything in the everything in the house came furnished, all the beds, all the pillows. The, there was a pool at the house, which was another which was a huge amenity. And then all the all the appliances, the pool table, a little arcade, little arcade game in the back. That was all came together in the deal and um what do you call it? this this um sandback game and of uh, this campfire was also there and all the bed like i said all the painting all the all the all the pictures the couch so this just goes to show you that it's this is not any themed house right this is not this house is nothing special it, it is a standard house that you'll see in arizona way as you drive down the street but this, but houses like this gets rented out all the time. And this house, where did this house come from? It came from the no equity list that I talk about on my YouTube channel all the time. So wholesaler watches my YouTube video and he goes, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go do exactly what Kevin says. And he goes and gets all the, he gets, and he gets a free list from me and he calls the list and then, and then he gets it under contract and he sells a deal to me and boom, everybody got paid. Right. And now I have a house that I was living in and now, and now that's an Airbnb. So uh, that's, that's the breakdown of the deal. And if you guys have any more questions, please drop in the comments below, because I do check every single comment and I want to be able to answer every single one of them going forward. I'll be doing way more videos about breaking, underwriting my own deals and going forward. I, as I see the comments, I'm going to be covering them more and more and more as I go. So I hope you guys like this video and I, 
truly, truly, thank you so much for everyone for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.